Hey, what's going on? Uh, YouTube Alabama Reloader here. Um, just wanted to, uh, let's see, post uh, another video. This one is going to be, uh, so this one's going to be dealing with the, uh, let's see if we can see that. Yeah, let's get that in focus there. Whoop, other way, other way. Six millimeter Creedmoor. That is what we're going with today. Um, so, and the reason being is I just picked up some, uh, try to get somewhat organized around here. Um, just picked up a fresh box of Hornady um, 108 grain. ELD match bullets uh, ran down to Mr. Big Guns over in Huntsville um, and picked those up. Uh, I just uploaded, um, I'm shooting this video actually right after I did a live, I did a live stream um, where I talk about the purchase and how their pricing compares to you know what I found online and blah 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 and all that all that jazz um, so you definitely need to go check out their website uh, mrbigguns.com I gotta pull up the Hodgson load data here that's why I'm gonna sit here and play on my phone and pull it up because I have the Hornady manual um, but of course it's not updated it's the 10th edition it's the latest one to have but it's not updated with the 6mm Creedmoor um, information which is somewhat frustrating it's got 6.5 Grendel it's got you know everything under the Sun except for the six millimeter um, so hopefully when they release a new one it'll have the the creed more in it the six millimeter um, let's see here. so we just go to Hodgson this is gonna be the Saturday uh, load load test um, that's what we're gonna be looking at I have a pretty good load already worked up for this particular bullet way back when. Um, so, but it's actually the minimum um, by Hodgson. Their recommended uh, minimum starting load is 37.8 grains with H4350. And that's actually what performed really, really well in my Ruger American Predator uh, with this bullet. So I just stuck with that. And that's on the minimum side. And we can go up to. So that's probably only getting us around 2,800 feet per second. Um, I hadn't run it through the chronograph yet because uh, I haven't loaded any up at that uh, at that load in a while. So, but what we're going to do on the Saturday load test, we're going to load up 10, 10 rounds. Um, we're going to start at 41.6, work backwards. Uh, I haven't really decided 0.2 or 0.3 grain increments. Um, going backwards, maybe 0.3. I don't know. Well, yeah, we may we may do 0.3. Um, and it's calling for point or 2.770 for the overall length. So that's what we'll load them to. Um, let's see what else. That's about it. Uh, we're also so we're gonna do 10 rounds of H4350. Uh, we're also gonna do 10 rounds of. Uh, IMR 4350 and Hodgson Superformance. Those are the three powders that I have for six millimeters so far. Um, probably going to pick up IMR 4451. Uh, maybe I don't know. I'd like to. I'd like to test a few different powders doing this same uh, testing method. So we're going to start at 41.6. So we'll go ahead. We can at least get that going uh, while I'm sitting here yapping. Um, get this adjusted out. So that way we're good to go. We we'll go to seat it. I did pick up some new, uh, picked up some new calipers also. Um, had the dial calipers, the Lyman dial calipers for a while, and they worked good. Um, no complaints there. But I just wanted some digital. Make sure y'all can still see. Yep. All right. Good. Um, I just wanted some digital, just a little bit easier to read. I deal with digital calipers at work 
all day, every day as a manufacturing engineer. So they're just a lot easier to read, a lot faster, not easier. The dial's not difficult to read. It's just a lot quicker to read, I guess. I guess is what I'll say. It's probably what I should say. Um, but I did pick up, I picked up this guy also. So that, this is actually really sweet. I mean, this, is, this will be the first time I've used it. Um, we'll actually be on this particular uh, load work up here, this test. This will be the first time I've used it. Um, the foam, so on the review that I saw, uh, basically kind of piqued my interest on this, was on Johnny's reloading bench. He did a review of this and he, he kind of, he said one of the complaints he had was how hard it was to get the funnel out of the dead gum foam. And man, he wouldn't, I mean, he wasn't lying. It, it wasn't easy. Um, it wasn't really like super difficult, but at the same time, I, I could see where that'd be a pain. And then also this little card, that little card right there, it tells you which insert to use for which um, cartridge you're reloading. That's actually stuck right back here in this little slit in the back. You're, I don't know, you're not pulling that out by hand. I can go ahead and I can promise you that. I had to get a pair of needle nose pliers because that tab sticks up right above the right above the black foam. I had to get a pair of needle nose pliers and I mean yank on that bad boy to get it to come out. So it's in there. Um, I doubt you'll be able to get it out with your hand. So all right. So we've got the uh, we got the .243 slash six millimeter insert in here so. and I always load everything left to right I don't, I'm weird like that but I load everything left to right um, so in this case since I started with the max charge I'm gonna go from right to left that way when I go back and I get ready to, to seat all my bullets and you know line everything up in a, in an ammo box I'll know hey from left to right this is minimum you know lower charge working oh geez Lord. See what happens. Lower charge working up to uh, working up to max charge. That's always fun. Make sure you don't accidentally hit your cases when you, when you're trying to shoot a video, because then you got to go back at least through the ten that you're trying to load up on the video. All right, powder didn't go that far. That's kind of frustrating. So. All right, so we're gonna do another one. So, I said 41.6. So yeah, there you go. That's a mistake to avoid. Let's see if I can get y'all a little bit closer here so you can see what all's going on. There we go. So we're just gonna be loading up these these 10 and I'm thinking we'll just do three tenths of a grain increment um, yeah maybe yeah whatever we'll do that and then so the whole point um, I mean there's so many videos on YouTube about the Saturday load test and all that fun stuff and uh, there you go uh, my brother calls me out every time I say fun stuff all that fun stuff I say it quite a bit um, on all my videos, but there you go. That's another another time that I said it. So, uh, but though, there's so many videos about the test and Scott Satterley and how he developed the test and why he developed the test. And uh, so we're not really going to go into all that detail. Basically, if you've never heard of the Satterley load test, just Google it. Um, look it up on YouTube. Uh, Forty-one point and you again you'll find a ton of videos about it so pretty much um, I, I heard it compared this way to the to the optimal charge weight test the OCW test the OCW test takes into account the rifle dynamics and so it really uh, basically fine tunes the load to the rifle and how that particular rifle handles that load with the Satterley load test, that method, um, where you're loading up 10 charges, uh, 10, 10 rounds with different charge weights, and then you graph, it, do, it doesn't matter, 
doesn't matter how these even shoot, to be honest with you. What you, you just want to shoot them through a chronograph to collect the velocity data, and then you graph that velocity data, uh, something like Excel or graphing paper or whatever you have handy. You graph that, and then you're looking for basically flat spots, and I'll put quotes, you know, air quotes around flat. Um, basically, you're just looking for plateaus in your velocity um, throughout the, the 10 charges. And so what that does, whereas the, the OCW is really geared toward the rifle dynamics, um, the Satterley load test is geared toward pressure dynamics. So, um, let's see, now we're down to 41. And so what's cool about that is, uh, basically, you're gonna find uh, a sweet spot out of the 10 rounds, the 10 charges that you load up, you're gonna find a sweet spot where your velocity varies uh, very minimally, right? So it's only, gonna, it's only gonna change just a few feet per second, you know, between three different charges possibly. You know, you may only change five, six, seven feet per second, eight feet per second. You're, you're gonna see basically where your velocity flattens out, it plateaus, and then it'll start to go up again. So in that area, that's the, that's pretty much a very stable load um, where the pressure is very stable. And what's good about that is, say, say for this load, for instance, just take it for instance, we go out and I shoot this. And so right now I just threw a charge of 41. So let's say 40.7, 41, and 41.3. Say those three charges, you know, we'll just hypothetically. Um, there's not a lot of variation in the velocity and so very small change in the velocity so then what's good about that is i can then go back and load up um, a few rounds maybe at at 40 so right there in the middle and see how they group all right so that lets you kind of hone in on a sweet spot in your in your velocity and your pressure that lets you hone in on that so that way, if that 40 grain load actually performs pretty well, when you go to reload it, you can be off a tenth of a grain one way or the other, or a couple of tenths of a grain. You know, you can you can uh, be off one way or the other, and you know that you're you're not going to have a lot of deviation in your velocity. So your load will still perform very well, even if you're off, you know, a couple of tenths of a grain. Uh, that was 41, so now I'm 40. Um, so that's what's cool about this test, and that's kind of what it what it does and what it shows, is it allows you to really hone in instead of you know loading up, you know, 50 rounds or 25 rounds, you know, five shot groups and going out and slinging a lot of lead down range, which that is fun and I enjoy doing that. Um, but if you're wanting to get uh, identify a decent load very quickly, from what I understand and what I've seen, this is about the best way to do it, the best test to do it. Because if you're like me and you're sitting here having to foot the bill for all this stuff, I mean, good night. And this stuff's not cheap. So, I mean, I went and picked up a box of these and uh, over at Mr. Big Guns, they had, them, they had them priced pretty good. I mean, $34.99 for a box of $100 um, for the ELD match. So, I mean, that's pretty doggone good. Uh, I think online I was seeing them for $35.99. So, um, not bad at all. But still, you go out and you know, maybe you work up 10 five shot groups or just five five shot. I mean, that's 25 rounds you burn through right there if you just did five five shot groups. Um, let's see, so it's 40.7, so now we're 40.4. It'd probably help if I'd pay attention to what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, so just kind of from what I've seen. So that's what we're, that's what we're gonna do on the next few videos. Uh, probably just show some reloading for the Saturday load test. This is gonna be for the six millimeter Creedmoor. I've already got 10 rounds loaded up for the 308. Um, probably repeat the same test with, you know, like I said, a few different powders. See how they perform. Um, we'll try to identify a decent load at the overall length, you know, the manual recommends 2.770. If we can't find anything that's extremely accurate at that at that overall length, 
we'll basically establish a load based on the, the velocity plateau. So wherever we see those velocities sort of level out, we'll, we'll hone in on that area. Um, and then we'll, we'll load up some rounds there, see how they perform. And it, if we don't get the results we wanted to, then, then I'll start to play with overall length. You know, I'll start to, to lengthen that round out a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, that's, that's jumping ahead of ourselves. So I'm basically just giving you guys the game plan on what we're doing and why we're doing it. So while that's over there, we're going to move you guys right over here. Well, why is it? Why is it not wanting to focus? All right, so go ahead and load up a couple of these. So, and so I'm using Hornady brass, um, Federal gold medal match, uh, large rifle primers. I'm drinking out of my General Dynamics coffee mug there. Um, so yeah, we're gonna check this bad boy out. Let's see where we're at. Calipers on here, get them zeroed. We're at 2.848. So gotta come down about 70 thousandths. Which this is where the, the micrometer um, or the micro adjust seating stem would come in handy. Uh, now we're at 2.822. I mean, those, uh, those, uh, those RCBS gold medal um, die sets, man, those things are hard to beat. I've got that one for the 308, and it is. Pretty awesome. All right, we're about 17 thousandths long now. thousandths long so we're gonna set that one there we're gonna load up a couple more and see where we're at we'll kind of get an average but, but that's pretty much it um, that's what we're that's what we're working on uh, Saturday load test so there you go Appreciate you guys checking out the video. Uh, don't forget, head over to Mr. Big Guns, especially if you're local. Uh, stop in, talk to Matt and his staff. Just let them know I sent you over. Um, and yeah, check out their website, Facebook page, all that. Uh, uh, let's see. And that's it. So appreciate everybody checking it out. Y'all have a good one.